Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Five Drinks Through Midnight. Another show where we bring the questions, guests bring the drinks, we try to wrap up before midnight. Today we got a good one, brand new category for us. We're headed into Lower Manhattan to talk to Douglas Waters, founder of Dry Atlas and Spirit Away. Spirit Away is the first non-alcoholic liquor store here in America. But before we do, like and subscribe, hit the bells, hit the whistles, do everything. Leave us a comment if you like what we're doing. Let's go ahead, let's get started. Happy five drinks or midnight. So uh, thank you. It's how great to have you today, here. Sir? I'm doing great. It's wonderful to have you here. Excellent. Uh, I guess the first thing is, is what are we drinking first? What are we drinking first? All right, we're gonna start with the new Gia aperitif. Okay. We're, we're gonna start with the aperitif, which seems fitting. This is a, a fairly well-known brand in the space, and they're reformulating. So it's a very new industry, and kind of the fun and Part of the fun and the excitement for me is watching the brands grow and develop and learn and reformulate along the way. And this is one that their original formulation is quite good, but they just reformulated. And okay. I haven't tried the new one yet, so we will see together if All right. we like it. Okay. That is So that's the reformulated one? This is the new one, yeah. They oh. just sent me. We have we, we sell their aperitif and have for a long time. It's, it's one of our better sellers. Um, but this is a new, just a sample bottle they've sent me of the new formulation, which you can tell the color's a little different. Um, the old one is not tomato-y. It's, yeah. it's not a Bloody Mary, but it looks a little tomato-y, so yeah. I think they kind of fixed that. Okay. Fixed yeah. that coloring with the new formulation and made some tweaks to the flavor as well to make it a little bit more concentrated. Awesome. Which the old one was quite concentrated too, but okay. we'll try the... Uh, awesome. Thank you. We'll try the new one. Cheers. Cheers. So uh, quite quite gingery. Yep. You get a lot of ginger. You get a lot of uh, yuzu. Just a great. That's nice. Very great zipper. It's not doesn't taste anything anything like Campari or Aperol, but same same use to case. Yeah, yeah. You know, Same kind of like, you know, spritz it with soda water. Yeah. Just drink it. Drink it neat. It's for me. It's for me. It's a little. It's a little potent to to drink on the rocks like we are. Mm. I usually spritz it with soda water, but and, uh, well, I will tell you, like uh, uh, this immediately, I went to Negroni. Like I yeah. just immediately, I was like, this is almost a, a full on Negroni right here. Like this is, you get the, I mean, the colors there. You get the, mm -hmm. yeah. It's a nice if you wanted to make a, a non out Negroni. It's nice for the. The bitter aperitif, third of that, or also just nice on its own. Yeah, that's really nice. I, yeah, I'm down. You, you feeling it? Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I mean that is, yeah, I. The aperitif, the aperitif and digestive part of the category do well. I think a lot of that is because people are used to the aperols and camparis and. Avernus and whatnot of the world being pretty low ABV anyway, yeah. so it's not too much of yeah. a stretch to stretch, have, yeah. um, a non-alcoholic version. That's freaking awesome. Okay, well, let's yeah, like it. Let's uh, jump right into it. Uh, question one, so a little bit of an origin story. We always ask uh, the same question, but so how'd you come up with the idea of Spirit Away? Like, like that's, yeah. like, how, I guess, usually we ask, how'd you get into the business? But like, <laughs> I mean, this is a little bit more than just, you know, a, in yeah. the business, so. So the year's 2020. Um, we went from, in that year, I went from going to a corporate office in Midtown to working from home every day. And that was a very, a very boring day ritual. I, I didn't have, or that was a very, a, a very boring day and you kind of roll out of bed, you open your computer, you start working, you close your computer at the end of the day and you're, 
you know, you don't have you don't have moments of punctuation within that day. Sure. And for me, making a cocktail every evening at the close of the business day was the way to kind of punctuate that transition from this is me working to this is me, you know, we're still maybe we're still in the living room, right, but right. Yeah. now we're hanging out, yeah. now we're socializing, <laughs> yeah. now we're doing um, whatever we're doing. Um, so I began making a lot of cocktails. I had always enjoyed making cocktails, mm-hmm. but I began making making more of them and having it be kind of a daily occurrence. And just as I have gotten older, I've started to feel better when I don't drink alcohol necessarily every day. And I started to think about how can I keep this ritual of making drinks for myself every night and keep playing with the ingredients and making making things that I enjoy playing with for myself and for family and friends and do it with less less alcohol and in many cases no alcohol at all. Okay. Uh, do you, did you have like a, a favorite uh Spirit, uh, like, what was your uh, cocktail beverage of choice? Yeah, so I found it very hard to find the things I needed to to make drinks. I I'm not advanced enough to distill my own ingredients, <laughs> or like, I'm a pretty basic like gin and tonic, yeah, okay. two or three ingredient cocktail gotcha. guy. Gotcha. Um, so I was I was looking for products that would help me to make that make that a little easier, and found it really hard to find them. You could order some of these brands. The brands that were around back then were available via uh, direct-to-consumer online. You mm-hmm. could go to their website, you could buy them online and wait wait a week and get them in the mail with a bunch of packaging and you know, you break down all that recycling and go through all that rigmarole. Burn your calories. I like just go, I like just going to Astor Place and yeah. getting a bottle of what I there need. It's, yeah. we live in New we live in the greatest city in the world. Yep. It's, you know, we just go to the corner bodega and you get spoiled by that, and I wanted to have a place where the neighbors here in in my neighborhood could do what do what I do when I need a bottle of something. That's, that's awesome. And it, yeah, is it true that like uh, your whole apartment just became like full of boxes? Like you you just were ordering like instead of people that normally went Amazon crazy, you went. Uh, I went a little. Like, I went a little uh, crazy on the spirits for sure, and. A lot of the brands were really receptive to what I was proposing doing, and would just send me send me samples of their products. So you know, once once they kind of got got a hint of my being interested in opening a store, they started sending samples too. Awesome. So then the problem really compounded, and then our tiny little New York apartment was very quickly full of <laughs> very boxes. full of uh, boxes and bottles, which is a good problem. To that's have. that's awesome. Uh, and then you moved, like so you opened your this is the second kind of spot, right? This is this is our second spot. We originally opened on Ludlow Street on the Lower East Side. It was the smallest space I could find, the cheapest space I could find. And made it work for about six months until we just outgrew it. Um, it was really a an inexpensive way to test test the concept and figure out whether whether it was gonna really, really turn into something. And when it did, I decided to move into our permanent home here and build it out and make it make it what I want it to be. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think and again, so you're the first of its kind in the US like We're the we're the first non alcoholic bottle shop in America that I know of. Okay. I believe there may have been some in England and Australia before us, but I think I, I've been saying that for a while. Nobody's corrected me yet. So. <laughs> no, I, well, I think that's so awesome. Because again, yeah, when I came across that, video, I was like, I was completely blown away. And then to find out that you were here in New York, and that's why I had to reach out. But like, uh, how, wow. how does the neighborhood? Like, I mean, again, just setting up, we saw, like, you got pretty good foot traffic. Like, how does the yeah. neighborhood handle, uh, you know, a, a non-alcoholic spirit store? It's great. We. Uh... We still get the occasional person who walks by or pokes their head in and says, "What? <laughs> like, what is, what is this?" Uh, but most people, most people now, compared to three years ago when we opened, kind of get it that the, the industry has really made great strides in that amount of time. Yeah. And I think we've we've done done a good job of normalizing what's still a pretty niche and, and novel category, but growing less so every day okay i mean it's awesome like again the store is absolutely beautiful and i, I immediately when i came in like I'm, it just labels are just like it's just beautifully they're, like, pr- set they're up. pretty brands yeah, yeah. And, like it's just it's really gorgeous like i just love the 
the feng shui of it all, if nice, you will. Yeah. yeah. It's really nice. Like it's super cool. Like this is, and it's a great it's a great neighborhood to be in. This is one of my favorite neighborhoods in the city. Yeah. And we get we get customers from the, the building upstairs who come down and and shop and our regulars and people from around the around the neighborhood. So that's awesome. It's a great spot. Well, that, that's question one. So band-aids ripped off and right. our, our train is leaving the station. So cheers to you and be, congratulations. Cheers, Tim. Thanks for being here. All right, question two, drink two. What are we drinking? Question two, drink two. So we're doing another repair teeth. This is, and this is a nice contrast. This is a, you know, one of our older brands that's, that's been around for a while in a relatively new industry. This is one of our newer brands, new female found, founded New York brand, um, or early release of this. So we stock some some of the bigger brands in the space and some of the smaller smaller more local ones this is tectonics which is a lemon ginger matcha aperitif it's also like the Gia, a pretty robust flavor which i like some of sometimes some of the some of the criticism of the space is the flavors of some of the products aren't pronounced enough these are not not a problem for these two uh, is this your wife's brand it is yeah right So, and I like this spritz too. Okay. Feel free to try it. Yeah, give yeah, it a try it. Oh, nice. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, wow. So very citrus, very citrus forward again. That is crazy. No, I love that. That is actually, <laughs> wow. That is awesome. How'd you like it? You want to try it? Yeah, you try just a little of the... Wow, okay. <laughs> no, that, that is, like you said, completely drastically changed from, yeah. the, from the first one. But wow, okay. Fuck, wow. All right. That is... No. I'm glad you're digging it. Yeah. No, I am. That is so amazing. Yeah, so I think like the, the aperitif category within, within the non alcoholic space is well... It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a leader in the in the category. I think some of the some of the brands that are doing non alcoholic juice do do really well. Um, so one of the things that you guys have on for question two, uh, one of the things you guys have on on your website, which I think it's, we love a good motto and we love a good ethos and like yeah. a, something to stand by. And you talked about uh, on the site um, how. Uh, Basically, Mediterraneans eat and drink and live way longer than we do, but yet they drink way more than us. And it, it, you, you talked about how it wasn't the drinking that really made them live longer; it was the like the company. This is this is very much like Douglas's theory. Like I don't know if there's any. Oh. I think with any health, nutrition, wellness very hard to ever prove causation versus correlation, right? There's a lot of correlation data, but it's very hard to ever prove causation. But to me, it, it seems to make sense when we view the changing evidence about the health impact of alcohol, the health impacts of other things in their diet. I, I think it's a pretty, a pretty reasonable theory for, and what we know about how social interaction helps us to Helps it helps our own wellness, helps keep us happy for longer, and and everything else. So, I that's that's my theory. But no, I, I again <laughs> uh, here like at five drinks. I mean, we have a motto that is drinking with friends is always the best way to yeah. drink. So, yeah. uh, and again, so okay, uh, so that influences what we do here because we're very much pro. Like we're about socializing. We are about revelry. We are about. Um, like we are here to bring people together and to give people something to drink when we are in groups, when we are at parties, whatever, whatever else. And it's not about, it's not about what we lose when we remove the alcohol or choose to drink less alcohol. It's about what we gain from, from being together and from socializing and from having deep relationships that are, that are benefited by that. Awesome. So, so uh, I know it's kind of a little bit of a, Stereotypical question, but since we just met and we are becoming fast friends, uh, 
if there were five people that you would want to have around a dinner party or out drinking with, who would it be? Well, aside from, aside from you, of course. Yeah, awesome. Well, um, I appreciate even though we just met that I'm making the table, so that's awesome. I don't know. Five five people is a hard... That's a... That's, that's, a, that's, that's, that's too a, many people? That's a hard... That's... No. Three? Three's hard, too. <laughs> I, I mean, it's... I don't know. I've got so many, so many good buddies from, from college and from high school and, you know, my wife and so many, so many good friends. I'd, I'd probably, because we're in a non alk space right now, I'd probably get together some of my college buddies who, with him, I drank a ton yeah. back in college and really irresponsibly. We're good streaky! Yeah. And <laughs> we, we've, all, we've all gotten a lot, a lot older since then yep. and uh, making, making better health decisions and making more mindful decisions now. So all right. it's fun to, fun to get back together with that crew. And Always. Do, do some of the things we used to do and a lot of a lot of healthier things as well. <laughs> now you just have nothing to blame it on. So when you go yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I, there we go. I mean, I, I loved the, yeah. I I love Douglas's theory, and I, I think that is uh, you know a great theory to have, and uh, you know uh, I think it is proven. So uh, so we'll see how we'll see how it plays out. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, it, Part of what we need to do in this space is to continue to continue to encourage and support social social gatherings yeah. and like if 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 the the rhetoric around or if the data around alcohol being detrimental to health, which is which are more and more uh, more and more apparent every day, if that is somehow decreasing the amount of social interactions, then we've then we've failed and yeah. like that's that's a bad outcome for. For I think our our culture and society. So what we're trying to do is here is to not have that happen as as drinking preferences and tastes evolve over time. Trying to give people new options to still make the still make the parties fun. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, cheers and I, again, I mean, <laughs> cheers. Question three, drink three. We're flying through. This All right. Is, this is a. Uh, very, uh, my mind is blown. I'm loving this. So again, thank you for having us. Uh, uh, yeah, what are we drinking next? All right, we are moving on to having had some aperitif. Aperitiv. We're now going to have a whiskey alternative. Okay. You're the whiskey guy. Right. I'd be interested to hear what you think about it. We have so a lot of different spirit alternatives here. We have gin, tequila, rum, whiskey alternatives, etc. Uh, this is one of the few, and we don't yet stock this. We just kind of got these sample bottles recently. This is one of the few that's actually made from whiskey by okay. taking alcoholic whiskey and then de-alcoholizing it. I assume somewhat similarly to how you de-alcoholize wines, yeah. most of the spirit alternatives are not made with the spirit. They're made by combining the flavors to recreate the taste of the spirit. But this one's okay. a little bit unique. So we'll try a de-alcoholized whiskey. All right. It's made from made from whiskey and is now less than half a percent alcohol by volume. Everything here, everything in here, ha, here can have up to half a percent by volume. Okay, that's the legal limit for non-alcoholic. So anytime you de-alcoholize de something, you typically take it down to that 0.5 level and then stop because you lose lose flavor beyond that. So okay, wanna, kind of a cheers. cheers. It's got a good nose. It smells. It smells. It smells like bourbon whiskey. Yeah. It's got a little. Got a little burn. A little bit. Like there's something. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how they're doing that, but it's got a little. It's got a little burn to it. And I'm really getting the vanilla out of it. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. This is blowing my mind. I mean, you take you when you when you drink it neat like this. It, there's no there's no doubt that it doesn't have the alcohol. Right. 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 It's very. It's very clear that this is different somehow from alcoholic whiskey. But like this in an old fashion would absolutely yeah. Talk, like you would probably not notice that, that at all, like the difference whatsoever. The spirit this, alternatives I typically encourage people to to drink them in cocktails. Yeah. Um, but honestly, that's pretty well, pretty well just neat. Okay, mind blown. This is yeah. <laughs> that. All right. Well. Fuck. Okay. So we maybe maybe we'll stop this one in the future. It's a uh, you know made in, made in Kentucky and uh, by people who I assume know know a thing or two about bourbon. Yeah, you know I, I hear they make it you know a, a few down there. So, <laughs> yeah. um, 
Okay, so so whiskey Wednesdays we had to at least have had to at least have a whiskey. I'm not I'm not personally a huge whiskey guy. I like I, I drink some scotch every now and then, but not not a huge bourbon whiskey guy personally. But uh, I can I can appreciate them. This is blowing my mind. Okay, well that, so yeah, this leads perfectly into question three. So has there been a spirit that has blown your mind that you were like, there's no way that this is. Mm-hmm. Alcohol free in a good way or a bad way? That's a good question. Um I've I think now I I I know my my I don't have the world's best palate, but now it's pretty well attuned to the the subtleties and nuances. So I, I I'm I rarely get fooled. Okay. But uh but yeah, a lot of the spirit alternatives have gotten gotten really good and kind of like we were talking about earlier they they reformulate they figure out yeah. how to do things better they the technology for making the the drinks improve so we, we kind of see them getting better all the time another brand that does a whiskey is spiritless they're they're a kentucky mm-hmm. brand also and their original batch from a couple of years ago really wasn't very good or i didn't i yeah. didn't think it was they reformulated and now it's one of the best. It's it's a very a very nice one. We saw a lot of it, so it's fun to uh, it's fun to watch them all kind of improve on, and, yeah. and and reformulate and figure things out every day, just like we are here. God, this is I gotta say, like this is really blowing my mind. This is yeah, you get it in a nice. Nice, yeah. nice heavy glass. You got the yeah. Now the color, color is there. The, nose, the, the aro- the no- yeah. <laughs> and like you don't even have to do like the you know like the whiskey trick of like holding your mouth open or doing one nostril because the you don't you don't get the burn. Yeah. So like that, there's no alcohol. But, but yeah. the interesting thing about the burn from non-out spirits is it sticks with me a little bit longer okay. than the burn of an alcohol an alcohol burn does. You may notice the same thing. It'll kind of stick with you. A little bit longer. Not that that's yeah. necessarily a good or a bad thing. No, it's but yeah, a, kind of an interesting difference or tell. Oh, very cute. Uh, I know uh, people uh, hate this question, especially in the bar world. But uh, do you have a favorite right now that you're like? I guess what's your go-to bottle right now? Like you talk about pouring a cocktail at home during COVID. I'm assuming. You're still pouring cocktails and still making cocktails, but this time it's uh, yeah. I, yeah. I spend a lot of my time these days sampling new things that we don't yet sell, okay. like like we're kind of doing here. Um, so I end up displacing a lot of the a lot of my familiar favorites just to, to try new things. And you can only you can only have so many drinks in a night, even yeah, when yeah. they're even yeah, when they're, they're not out. Yeah, um, I drink a lot of a lot of bitter herbal digestive okay. and whatnot and the pathfinder is one of those that i like very much we have a new one from dr zero zero marno that, yeah. that i've been drinking a lot of and liking it okay those are the only two really digest okay that we have now and i'm looking forward to a lot of people making making a lot more of those um I'd love for somebody to make like a non-alcoholic Sousa or yeah. a visa or one of those i love those um, there's bitter gentian yeah, okay. tomorrows and things, so that's the kind of thing I would I would, awesome. love, I would love to sip if somebody were to make one. No, that's I can make myself a white Negroni. There you go. Yeah, be it's, be a happy man. Oh, this I just you have just yeah. This is <laughs> a freaking great experience. I'm glad you like it. Mm. All right. Well. So you're you're the whiskey guy. Yeah, like this is, I mean, I think the only, like I'm really, the only thing I'm really missing is the burn out of it. But Mm -hmm. like, it's just a weird, like you just got to get that right in your brain there for a minute. Then like, but like, I get flavor notes, I'm tasting the oak and the, it's got a little bit of the spice into it, but maybe yeah. that's the. But again, no, the, I think it's got some. It's got some good. The spice. honey is, uh, the, yeah, like the the sweetness is there. Like I'm getting vanilla. Like it's, it's crazy. Like yeah. that is, damn. All right. And what I like about it, I I, I I'm pretty much pretty much non-alcoholic these days. But 
if there's nothing there's nothing saying you can't take half a you know half half alcoholic bourbon and half non alcoholic bourbon and yeah. make a make a low ABV cocktail. Yeah, yeah. Like there's there are no rules against that. So that's a great way to yeah great way to mix it up too. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Question four, drink four. Question four. What are we drinking? I'm so excited. All right, this is Fair Gaia. Okay. Um, it's a Scottish brand, and it's not a Scotch whiskey alternative. It's it's a botanical, it's a distilled botanical spirit. It's a little bit, it's a little bit reminiscent of a Scotch. There there aren't a lot of there are not a lot of non alk Scotch whiskeys. I would love to see a lot more because I love Scotch. Um, but this is being being a Scottish brand. They're they are influenced by um, Scotch whiskeys, I think. Okay. So you you be the judge. It's it's uh it's totally novel and unique. And I think it's a it's a pretty well known brand in Scotland. It's not not widely available here in the U.S. yet, but maybe. Cheers. Maybe it will be soon. Wow. That is, the nose is fucking killer. Wow. So it's. Um, and this one actually does does surprisingly well need too. Um, the cool thing about the distilled botanicals is that it's often botanicals that I've never tasted before. I, maybe if you're Scottish, you would yeah. you would recognize some of these flavors, but they are often whether it's Ferragaya and their Scottish botanicals, or the South African brands with their Cape botanicals, or the you know northern northern English brands with their wild sea buckthorn and whatnot. It's a lot of flavors that I just have never tasted before, so it's fun for me to experience new. Oh, this is... So how would you even begin to describe? I don't know. Like, like this is just nectar of the gods. <laughs> I get, like, this is... It's... Yeah, you get the... Like, it, I mean, they're, never, they're not trying to be a scotch. No! Um, but, it's, but it also kind of... It, you can kind of sip it... You can kind of appreciate that you it, can sip it like it has, that. It has scotch-like quality. So like that, mm -hmm. I mean, there's no smoke to it, so it, there's yeah. nothing any, like along that, but the peat isn't there. But I'm getting the lemon and the botanicals, but then there's a little bit of like saltiness to it. Yeah. So yeah, like, yeah. like I, I can feel like this is, you know, by sea air, if you will. Like this is... I very much like it now. This is one that I was not wild about when I first tried it. A lot of times with new botanicals that I just have no exposure to, I have to make a couple drinks before I can kind of appreciate what they're doing. And now I really, I really quite like it. So cayenne pepper, black currant leaf, chamomile, lemon verbena, bay leaf, ancho chili, apple hibiscus. I don't know if I would have guessed any of those. Maybe, yeah. the, maybe a little bit of the, an the ancho chili. Or the bay leaf, but maybe that's what maybe that's what they use to get the. I don't, yeah, that, it's really that's crazy. Well, these brands are just they're mad scientists, and they're all creating their unique concoctions, and who knows how they know. Wow, that's it's, that's not okay. So question four. Uh, we've already talked. This is a second spot, so you've grown and continue to be growing. What's the future hold? Like, what what's future plan? So, like, if we're yeah. five years down, like, not looking for secrets or anything like that, but like, you know, are you, do you want to be as big as Aster? Or is that like, you know, the goal? Or I think that I think the industry is growing such that they're so that we will, as an industry, be as big as the the traditional wine and spirit space at some point. I think we're along. Yeah. We're we're a drop in the bucket now compared to that. The, uh, we have 225 different liquids, different SKUs here. Uh, the category is growing around the world. It's not. It's certainly not just New York. It's not just um, the UK. It's a global phenomenon. And what we do here at Spirited Away, when you when you come here, is we can have that consultative sales experience. We can talk to you about what flavors you like. We can help guide you to something that you're going to enjoy when you take it home. That can't scale beyond beyond this neighborhood for the foreseeable future with Spirited Away. But with Dry Atlas, my hope is that to some to some degree we can offer some of that experience by helping helping people to find non out drinks that they will they will love and enjoy. So awesome. it's a place where you can discover, rate and review over eight hundred different 
non -al adult non-alcoholic drinks, spirits, wines, beers, etc. Okay. So we're going to continue to focus on growing that over the next year. That's awesome. Making it a, a better destination for people to find and, and learn about this, this great new industry. That's awesome. Well, congratulations and yes. you deserve all this, this success that you have because that is, uh, I'm not even drunk like that. So <laughs> I didn't say success. There. But yeah, like that is, uh, wow. This is crazy. Like this is just. Like if you didn't live in Nolita and couldn't come here and, and try this with me, how would you, like how would you know? I, I wouldn't. So my hope is that by having a place like Dry Atlas that can be kind of a Yelp for non-alcoholic spirits, you can hear what other people who drink non-alcoholic drinks, you're in this space and you can hear what people think about it and get readings and reviews from real people who can help guide you in the right direction. Well, again, I, it's it, just completely subjective. And, well, but again, you're creating a community. Community helps make you live longer. Exactly. Douglas Theory. So, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Exactly. So, Cheers. <laughs> All right, so what are we drinking? So for our fifth, our fifth drink, we're going to have bitters and soda. Uh, you, you like bitters and soda? Of course. I mean, that is... I'm a huge, huge bitters and soda fan. It's like... You know, the industry is still new. They're not always great non out alternatives when you go to restaurants and bars or wedding receptions or whatever else. They can always make you a bitters and soda. And for me, for me, I'm perfectly happy with that because I love bitters and soda, but it's, it's kind of just like, you know, my go-to anytime I'm at an event that doesn't have options and I don't want to drink that night. There you go. Um, so this is a cool brand. This is a... Uh, all the bitter. This is uh, a husband and wife team who, you know, bitters are, bitters are usually very alcoholic. They're usually quite alcoholic, but of course you use very little of them. So um, you end up with a pretty low ABV drink to begin with, but these are for people who don't want any alcohol at all. Okay. Um, and this is part of their experimental series. It's a barrel aged New Orleans bitter. So it's good for making Sazeracs and things like that. Oh, nice. And... I hit the bitters pretty hard, so we'll give you a couple. We'll give you a couple dashes there. This one's uh they have three three different SKUs and this is kind of a limited batch. Of of the three, this the barrel aging on this one makes it interesting. I actually kinda like their aromatic. Their aromatic and citrus one's a little more than this one, but they're all they're all three very good. One more to grow on. That is. There we go. We go through a lot of we go through a lot of bitters in our house. Wow. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Oh, wow. I can just drink. I can just drink bitters and soda all night long. You can't go wrong with that. Yeah. That is. Yeah. And it's, you know, there's no, no sugar, so I don't feel. Yeah. No, no qualms about that. Um, oh, it's nice. So um, non-alcoholic bitters are typically made from vegetable glycerin as the base to hold it, hold it all together, or the suspension, I guess. Okay. And yeah, there are a couple, couple brands starting to do it, and it's great for, great for people who want a bitters and soda or just to add a little je ne sais quoi to their... To their yeah. Old fashions and every other every other cocktail. No, that this flavor is just. I know I keep saying it, but like that, again. I don't know what it is, but I kind of get the gum from like baseball cards. Okay. Like that's the that's the flavor that's that weird. I'm getting, and I, <laughs> I don't know why, but like for some reason. It, it, that's the memory that's popping up in my head. I it's love it. The, yeah. The like I love it. Like it's not, and again, not in a bad way either. It's just a. It's a. Can I just yeah, I put bitters. I put bitters in. Yeah, I was about to say. Um, I put bitters in pretty much every cocktail, just because I think it adds. It adds like a whole new depth. It's like the simplest way to add a whole new depth and complexity to basic cocktails. Mm -hmm. 
I've yeah. never I've never made a cocktail with bitters and and regretted it. It's just kind of a. Mm. Ah, that is really freaking good. <laughs> yeah, they're great, and it's me, and it's me a little toy dinosaur every time I place an order. With nice. <laughs> So question five comes down to the flip of the Whiskey Wednesday coin. You can flip it, you can spin it, you can do whatever you want. You don't have to answer. The coin will give us the answer. All right. Uh, but yeah, so uh, grab, uh, so I gave you two coins. So we got our new one and our old one. So uh, break my thumb flipping this thing. It weighs about two pounds. Yeah, you can, but uh, all right. So question five comes from the last sentence on your website, which is, can we have our cake and eat it too? Can we have our cake and eat it too? TBD. <laughs> TBD, let's see. <laughs> That's why I'd be broken. <laughs> this one's busted. That one's busted. <laughs> but yeah, fuck, fuck yeah. yeah. Yeah, we can. Um, it would have said yeah. fuck yeah if it didn't hit the glass. It yeah. is. I mean, I. It, it feels like cheating in a way. I mean, we're certainly, it's certainly not a, Perfect solution to have non-alcoholic drinks. You don't, yeah. you don't feel inebriated. Uh, you know, there, there's something uh, relaxing about that feeling. I, I, I'm conscious of what we are foregoing, and yet I feel, still feel that on balance, for me at least, it's an intensely personal decision for everyone. For me at least, it's a better, it's a better value for what I want to do and what I want to do the next day, and it works well for me. But I don't know if we can. Have our cake and eat it too. We'll, I think we, the jury's jury's still out, but we'll we'll see as time goes on. I mean, I think I, again, like you said, the category is growing, and just even by like mind blowing, like you maybe going full like this is non alcoholic whiskey, whatever. But like, there's still other things that like we can make from that. That just yeah. like that's. And for me, the I mean, for me, the purpose is. It's to get people together to have a cocktail yeah. and to like have a conversation and you know whatever whatever we're getting into or dancing or whatever it is. To me, the if I can hold a, a glass of something delicious in my hand and and enjoy that that experience in that moment, yeah. then then I am having my cake and eating yeah. it too. I I at this point really don't miss don't miss the alcohol at all. Yeah, no, this. I, mean, I have. I'm spo I'm spoiled for good good choices. So. Yeah, well, I mean, this right, that, that those bitters are amazing. Well, it's five drinks down, <laughs> five questions answered. <clears throat> Douglas, thank you so much for having us, and uh, thank you for being here, Tom. I hope uh, we can uh, drink together soon. I love that too. So, it's been great having uh, you yeah. here. <laughs> cheers and cheers. There we go.